In this video, I want to go over another image viewer called GThumb. Now, GThumb is not a new image viewer for Linux. It is, it's been around for a while, but I do want to, since I've been going through and kind of demonstrating or showing how to use different image viewers within Linux and cross platforms that will work with Windows 2, I've been doing that in the past few weeks and putting information on my website. GThumb is only really used for the Linux, and I don't really say Linux here. It's not cross-platform, so I didn't insinuate that it works for Macs or Windows. But GThumb is not just an image viewer. It's an image browser, editor, and a photo manager utility. If you did find this video on YouTube, I will provide a link that will show you how to install it, and it gives you a lot more information on how to use the program and a lot of its features and what I don't cover I do have a GThumb help section that you can click on to that takes you to the website when you click here that will show you how to use it as a file manager editing mode batch tools where you can do batch renaming changing the dates of all the pictures in a folder rotating images of all of them in a folder that's the batch tools how to work with slideshows importing from cameras sharing it making DVDs or blue or blu-rays or, or uh, CDs with not blu-rays but CDs or DVDs or ISO files with your images and other type like white wallpaper launching it in GIMP or other type of images or other references for shortcut keys and stuff so I do, do provide a help link below that has more information than what I show you on my web page now if you're wanting to install GThumb the version that's currently out from this PPA is 3.83 you don't need to add the PPA to your computer but if you just go to sudo app get update and then sudo app get install gthumb it will install an older version installing it from the ubuntu repositories so if you add the ppa by clicking on your terminal when the terminal opens just simply copy and paste that press the enter return key put in your password then update your ppas then go sudo app get install gthumb just copy and paste that that will install GThumb on your system if it's not already, already installed. If you decide later you don't like it, you could remove the, repeat, the PPA that we added and then remove the program and that will take it off your system. Below I just show you ways of using the program, how you can turn off and on like the, the thumbnails at the bottom. I give you alphabeticalized and then I tell you the name of each of those on the toolbar, show you how to use the editing features and look at some of the extensions and things. So I have a lot of information here on my website. But let's actually take a look at the program in action. Now as a default viewer, I don't have GThumb as the default viewer. I actually don't even have Eye of Mate anymore. It's not even installed on my system. I removed it. My default is the QMG view V. So if I accidentally double click it's not going to open up in GThumb or it's not even going to open up in Eye of Mate. It is the QIMG V. That's the one that I just decide to go with as my default viewer but I do like GThumb it's a great image viewer and it has a lot of support for a lot of different file formats and you can change the look of the way that this appears when you first open it I did make a video a while ago and then I realized I my mic was too close to my mouth and it was sounding a lot of hissing when I said S's so I left it here because I was showing the the metadata and so that was the last image so it will save the last appearance that you have so if I left that as you saw when I brought it up it will have your information or your properties button selected I like to keep the tools uh, either click that on or keep the editing usually I click, click click this button so when I open an image I have quick access to my crop features and save and save as and it allows me to make quick changes to this now my penta is my go-to on changing uh, appearances to images but if I want to do a quick crop I could click this button here and I could go over an image uh, if I wanted just the boat I could go down and shrink this up then I could hit accept if I wanted to overwrite the image I'd hit save if I wanted to give the new image I could say save as but in this case I don't want to overwrite that 
wallpaper so I say do not change and I click back here now when you saw this right here this is the photo manager so if I went to my applications and go to graphics click on gthumb it will open in my photo manager which means I can navigate my folders I can navigate to folders here and I could organize the way I'm seeing my images here I can click this to show a slideshow of all the images in this folder I could go under my preferences and change the speed and I can actually put transitions to make it look like it's a professional slideshow here I could by that shows you the history if I click that it will show every folder I've been to within this program that takes me back to my home folder this is my catalogs and I don't usually use the cataloging feature of gthumb this is allows you to bookmark an image so you can find it quickly and this allows you to search and you can search it using your metadata that's within your images now let me go back as an image viewer across the top that takes you back to your folder view your browser here this makes it full screen except it will leave your title bar across the top so if you're wanting to, if you're editing and want to see what it looks like full screen you click this and that allows you to see full screen view and after a while your toolbar does disappear across the top press the escape button to go back this right here basically is the set to the actual size it's going to set your image to the actual size here let me turn this feature off here so it'll set actual size but instead of making it full screen it makes it actual size here so you can see when you hover over it it shows you that you're looking at this part of that full size you don't see the other parts around it because your window here if you want to go back to fit within window you click this button you could change the your view feature you can click on some of the presets or you could drag your bar to re change the size here this allows you to rotate left this is rotate right this gives you the information about your metadata and a while ago when we were in the browse feature you could sort through and search the information you put within your metadata and you can actually change your metadata or edit and put things in your own metadata you could add comments to your images like if you want to add a description I'm not the photographer this I found this on the internet but if I want to give that a description if I was a photographer and did take that I could describe like where I was at when I took it I could give the location the place I could give it a title I could put a date on that image I could add additional tags like if it was taken in the fall I could put fall I could give it a rating like if I need to edit this I could leave a low rating or if I don't if I'm finished with it, I give it a high rating so you can save then your data that you put within your image your comments here's where you add tags like if I wanted to check this as like uh, holidays I could add a holiday tag if I this was like during the fall I could create a new tag and save it and check that but I'm going to cancel so I could sort by tags so this allows you to edit your metadata or add metadata to your images another thing I like about it is it allows you to delete metadata now I'm gonna to go to my back to my web page for a moment when I was scrolling down a while ago you saw a picture of a beardy guy that's my brother uh, back in uh, I think 2014 he went to California applied for a show called Big Brother 16 here in the US when he was out there in California he took pictures of things that he liked and he sent them back to me and I couldn't show anyone at the time because he was auditioning for Big Brother he had to keep that secret but then I looked at using this particular image viewer at the metadata and I also have links on my web page to where your metadata can sometimes reveal your location like your latitude and longitude and if you're a parent that can be very concerning that if your child has a cell phone or a digital camera if it has the GPS locator on then it could be tagging the latitude and longitude of the images that your child could be taking and putting on their social media and if people got those images they could go to a location like pics to map and there's a lot of websites out there we could say select a photo select it from your, uh, your image on your computer and it will upload and it will give you here's some examples that's the image that I took and put on my website which is the one here I, I have the link here so when you click on it that's a picture like if someone uploaded it told it was taken with a camera of a Samsung there's the model it told the date it was taken it gave the address because it had the GPS locator on on that particular camera so it was you can use Google to get the longitude and latitude to turn it into an address so that someone would know exactly where your child or you or someone that was using that camera was at so sometimes metadata can be a great tool if you are a photographer and you want to organize by the location that you took your images 
or the camera or any other features there's lots of information that's collected when you take a picture that you might not be aware of you know it shows you the model the, in this case the lens was unknown for that particular image it gives you a lot of information it told you the state the country the city North Pole is kind of funny it kind of reminds you of Christmas time uh, but anyhow that gives you information about your image so I did take my picture that my brother sent and I uploaded I looked here and as you can see within G thumb it told that he used Apple iPhone 4 back then I know it's up to Apple iPhone 11 now but he had an old phone even back then I could have scrolled down it give a lot a lot of information the only thing he did have correctly was he had his GPS turned off on his phone so as you can see here he did use an iPhone 4 basically gives me the same information that I had here but here allows me to go into the and delete the metadata so if your child has a lot of picture on his or her computer or their phone you can import it to your PC or computer and if you're using Linux and have gthumb you could delete the metadata so that that way your child's GPS location is turned off so it's a very nice feature for safety purposes so I do like to delete the metadata feature of gthumb and it has some other great uh, features as well, but I just use mostly the resizing features, the cropping features, and the delete the metadata. But you can personalize this. You can put different scripts or commands so that when you execute that script, it will do multiple commands at once or one right after the other. Here is your preferences. When you click onto the, that's basically a menu, which dot, dot, dot. It, gives you a lot of choices here but with your new preferences you can change the way that this looks for example when I click this button here that sh reveals icons of the images in that folder here when I go back to preferences and the general tab by default I can say for the thumbnail viewer it says by default at the bottom I could change that to on the side but since I don't hardly ever use it I will leave it at its default you can make a lot of other changes and go through and sh sh click on the different tabs and make changes to the way that that particular uh, that tab is set like viewer you can say fit to window if larger than and you can go through and make all sorts of changes and for your slideshow you can say transition effect you can add transitions say push from the bottom you can choose random transition so that we'll pick one of these at random here it's set to none they just automatically going to zoom in or replace the other image but you can put a transitional effect you can increase the amount of time so when you're in the slideshow mode it waits five seconds and then it changes your images you can say restart back to the beginning when it's finished or re put them in a random order when saving it you can change the default image you know a PNG file TGA TIFF WebP it does support the WebP format it doesn't support the animated WebP but it does support the WebP image format when you're printing if you don't like the fonts that it's printing if you're printing a caption a header or footer you can come in here and change your fonts and your font size you can add additional plugins or extensions to extend the power of gthumb so it's very very powerful program because you can take some of the community add-ins or plugins to make this even more powerful now let me show you something that I do like about gthumb the way that I use it like here you can convert an image yesterday I was going through and answering my questions of the day through some science questions and this is the question I'm not going to read that but that's a question and if you notice here extension is a PNG a lot of times PNG files are very large but I'm not going to I'm not concerned about this size but with gthumb I can convert it two different ways I can open up my image viewer and I could come up here and I could say uh, I could go up here and say convert a file format and when I do that I could say the JPEG I could change it to PNG which it is PNG I could change it to TGA TIFF or the WebP image so I'll click on this one to show you that it's a, a format or that supports it I hit execute and in a moment or two you're going to see that it now has the WEBP format extension on that image and it usually makes a thumbnail image of it I'm going to close this out and it should open and it did see I'm opening it in my default image viewer which is QImageV that's the WEPB format so it did support it and when I right click open it with gthumb it should open since it actually saved it that way so you can convert to different formats another way that you could do that is you can choose the on the editor you can go file save as here the save as button and where I've got the 620 
A for answer that provides the answer. Since it supports different formats, you can also save it as a different format by just overriding that extension like JPEG here. Instead of JPEG, I could shorten it to .jpg. I could hit the save button. When it comes up, I could choose my quality. I'll say to optimize it, I hit save. And if you look, I'll close this out. I now have the WebP extension, I have the PNG, which is the original image, and then I have the JPEG. So when I click the JPEG image, it opens up in my default viewer, or I can right click and open it up in GThumb. So when I click here, it now opens up as a JPEG images. So I like the way that I can save a different format or convert in formats. And for example, if I wanted to take that image out, I click the crop button, move this around, I could drag it around to the edges of it and then I could hit the accept button and if I wanted to keep my original uh, question with that image there I would hit the save as give this a new name instead of saying A I could now come up here B hit save hit the save button here and now it took and cropped out from that image here's the original image or I think the JPEG one was but here is the picture that I cropped out so it works great for a cropping tool so I do like the cropping ability of that. Now let me show you something else I do like about it, the resizing feature of GThumb. When I click onto this image here, as you can see down here in the bottom right, it's 4096 by 2720, which it's 3.3 megabytes or 3348 kilobytes. That's not a huge file size, but if I had a lot of images that size in a folder, it would take up a lot of space on my computer. Now my screen resolution is 1920 by 1080, so I really don't need anything in my wallpaper folder over that resolution. Any, if I did, it's just going to be taking up space, unneeded space. So here I could go right click, open with, G thumb, and once I do open it, I could come up here, I could say to resize my image, there's the 1920 by 1080. I want to make sure that that's not turned on because if I say preserve aspect ratio, when I put 1920, it might not let me change the height because it keeps the aspect the same. So I uncheck that to make that 1920 by 1080. Sometimes it might make it look a little distorted. If it does, you might want to change it something else and crop it where you can get the 1920 with 1080 where it don't look distorted. I'm not going to convert it. I'm going to leave the original format so I'm going to say keep the original format. When I hit execute, it comes up. Here's the original image, which is a lot larger. Here is kind of putting it in the center. And here's the new image, a lot smaller. The original image was 3.4 megabytes. I'm going to say overwrite the old file. If you wanted to keep the old file, if you're not familiar with this, you can say do not overwrite and give the new file a new name and then hit execute so you have the old one if you don't like the looks. But in this case, I'm going to say execute it's going to overwrite so now when I close this out and I now click on this instead of being 4000 it's now 1920 by 1080 which is my screen resolution you remember it was 3.3 or 3.4 megabytes it's now 334 kilobytes so if I had a lot of images in my wallpaper folder and they were several megabytes large I could use the batch converter of GThumb and make sure that I convert them all to 1920 by 1080 and that would save a lot of space on my computer so I do like the ability of resizing an image with GThumb so really that's the features I use I use it for the cropping tool the editing features I use it for the resizing an image and I use it to delete the metadata now if for some reason after let's say that I've got an image that won't open in Penta because it's too large Penta might not support an image that's huge I could go through here and resize it down to a size that I know that would work and after I resize I don't have to close it and then open Penta and then open the image I can right click on this say open with and then I could choose Penta and after I resize it it would immediately open into that image editor you know if I got I've got GIMP on here I could say open into GIMP so this works with other editors so I can do the editing features here then right click and work with another image editor. Penta is really my go-to editor for most of my editing needs when there's something that I can't do then I will go to my GIMP but I don't use GIMP nowhere near as much as I do the GThumb and my Penta image editor hopefully this has given you an idea on how to use GThumb like I said I don't use it as my primary image viewer but I do use it as a just a right click quick access open with GThumb 
and it's easy to edit an image that way. So hopefully this has been beneficial to you and have a great day.